and welcome to another episode of Experts Speak. I'm Michael Delon. Today, I'm talking with Ryan Hanley. And Ryan, well, Ryan, first of all, thanks for squeezing me into your calendar and spending a few minutes with me. Mario, well, it's a pleasure to be here, bud. And it's going to be a great conversation. Ryan uh, founded a company called Rogue Risk. He does a lot of things, but at Rogue Risk, they help small business owners buy insurance without the hassle. And it's really going to be a fantastic conversation. So let's just dive into it. Ryan, how in the world did you get doing this today? See, here's the hard part. You said fantastic, but we're talking about insurance. So now everyone thinks you're a liar. No, no, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, no, so uh, I'll give you the kind of 50 cent tour here. Um, I actually started in the insurance industry back uh, 17 years ago. Um, basically, um, she's not my ex-wife, but at the time, um, the woman that I wanted to marry, it was kind of the dowry for her hand in marriage was to start selling insurance. Her dad owned an independent agency and he kind of made me an offer I couldn't refuse very like mafioso style. Yeah. Uh, I think he just didn't want his little girl to be married to a bum. There so he uh, he brought me in and taught me how to sell insurance. And what I realized really quickly is that I was terrible at it. Uh, yeah. Certainly the traditional way. I was putting 50,000 miles on my car, driving from strip plaza to strip plaza, handing out business cards and and doing everything the very, the traditional way. That was how I was taught. And this is, this is 2005, 2006. So I'm, I'm, this is what you did back then. The internet was barely a thing. Yeah. And, uh, I, and that's what I did. And I was really bad. And 18 months in, he called me into his office to fire me. And I did what any self-respecting young man would do at the time. I literally got down on my knees and said, please do not make me go home to your daughter and tell her that I got fired by you. And he gave me another shot. Um, what I realized was doing it the traditional way wasn't going to work for me for whatever reason. Uh, just, I could, I could go into it, but it's kind of irrelevant to the story. Exactly. So I, I had to find another way. And what I found was LinkedIn first and the oh, internet yeah. in general, Google. And I, you know, this now is 2007, 2008. The internet is more of a thing. Google's a thing. YouTube's a thing. Uh, very early days. And I realized that there were people having conversations online that I wasn't a part of. And these were people that I wanted to do business with. So I engaged full force into digital marketing. And, and really what I was doing, um, a good buddy of mine wrote a book on this called They Ask, You Answer, Marcus Sheridan. It's a tremendous book for, for any business owner, a very simple, practical way to generate a lot of really good inbound uh, traffic and, and customers. Um, but that's what I, and, and really we actually met because we were both doing this process. I was just answering questions. Like I would get questions from, from prospects and I was like, man, I, I've been in the business for two, three years now. And, and I don't even know the answers to these questions, like right off the tip of my tongue. How are the people who are actually buying this product supposed to know? So I just started answering them. Long story short, that changed the course of my entire career. I became very good at this. I became very good at educating people online. Uh, I developed an understanding for how uh, particularly small business owners and, and some middle market uh, companies um, the challenges that they had in insurance, the frustrations they had with insurance, and that uh, my belief was if I could provide education first, give them all the information, all the knowledge I had, then when they came to me, we could have a very productive conversation because so much of the traditional insurance interaction is like this. It's almost like this game of chicken, right? Like right. they're trying to get some information out of the person, but the person that the agents doesn't really want to give all the information until they buy. And then they're not sure if they should buy because they don't know all the information the agent has. And it's, it's a horrible, horrible process. So there. I said, <laughs> screw all that. I'm going to give them absolutely everything I know. And if they want help, They'll come to me and I'll be happy to help them. And that yeah. really worked and uh, changed the course of my career. Unfortunately, eight years in um, the very traditional agency that I was working for, uh, they just didn't believe what I believed. Even though I had had a tremendous amount of success, I was driving more than 100 leads a month to a small agency in upstate New York on less than a $100 budget. And they just didn't care. To them, it was like it was like blaspheming the way that I was doing wow. business. It was, yeah. it was wild. And uh and they made it very clear that there wasn't really a future there for me. So I left and became the chief marketing officer of a national digital insurance technology company, which okay. allowed me to interact with tens of thousands of agencies. So, so the experience that I got in that position was seeing the full spectrum. I've, uh, I, I'm a keynote speaker. I do a lot of workshops as well. And I've presented uh, particularly to insurance industries in 44 states. So I've seen almost every market. I've been in Little Rock multiple times. It's a, it's a beautiful city. I, I yeah. love going to Arkansas. I love the people of Arkansas. So I, I, 
I I've seen the full spectrum. I know how the big agents act, how the small agents act, how the agents who who go direct to consumer, how the agents who work through brokers. Uh, you know, I I've seen this this 360 degrees of this industry. Um, uh, uh, skipping through that, I got fired from that job for a couple of reasons. Got fired from my neck job. Got fired from my next job, which was actually uh, uh, I I I thought maybe hey it, it's not it's not. Um, Insurance isn't for me. I love this industry, but it's not for me. I became the CEO of a fitness franchise of all things. 2,100 uh, clients when I took over, uh, 3,000 clients nine months later, and the founder decided the business was quote unquote fun again. And, um, you know, uh, uh, asked me to not be part of the organization. And that's when I figured it's the universe telling me, Ryan, you are not meant to work for anybody. You're unemployable, Ryan. (laughs) So uh, in March of 2020, uh, March 9th, actually, of 2020, I launched uh, Rogue Risk. Rogue was meant to take the white gloves enterprise level service that's delivered to large businesses and bring it down market to middle and small businesses. So, you know, they're, they're, most small businesses in the insurance space are kind of treated with like a pat on the head mentality. Hey, here's what it is. You don't really have any options. Have a nice day. Yeah. And um, I wanted to change that. And that was in... I didn't know COVID was coming, uh, obviously. And that was a gut punch. Uh, you know, I've put about $47,000 into the business to launch it. And seven days later, the world shuts down. <laughs> so um, that was tough, but we survived. And what I had to do uh, was pivot from, you know, we were going to mostly just be a local bit, mo- local agency. Okay. Um, I had to pivot very hard in order to find enough business to survive. Going back to my roots of answering questions, answering them in real terms, putting all the information out. We now have one of the most YouTube, one of the most trafficked uh, YouTube channels in all of the country. Um, and we answer questions from a, across the spectrum. We are constantly adding new content. And our whole goal is to give our prospects before they ever call us everything they need to know about the transaction that, so that they can trust that when we deliver to them a proposal to say, hey, here's what we think you should have, that we are doing that in good faith through transparency and honesty. And we're doing it because we want their business to sustain. Yeah. And uh, I'm happy to talk about why I believe that insurance is about sustainability, not necessarily protection, uh, if you're interested. That would be fascinating because you just hit on a marketing principle that I teach my my audience and my clients is, is I want to be the first one you think of and the one you feel the best about when you're ready to make a decision. Yeah, And we, we follow a very similar approach of educate, educate, educate. Mm-hmm. And what I find, right, and I'm sure you do too, is when you do that, your sales calls are not really sales calls. They're they're really short because the, the buyer might have two questions, but it's not, are you okay? I, they, they have all the information. They've preconditioned themselves. And I love that with insurance because it's a, it's a rat maze for those of us on the outside. Yeah. We, and, and you're right. Nobody wants to like really divulge and they put f- funny names on things. And so to confuse you. So I really love the uh, the model that you got that you guys have there. What what let's talk real, real quick. Um, business owners. I mean, they 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 probably would rather go get a, a root canal than, yeah. than talk insurance. Right. What is it that causes them to either stay where they are or. um what what keeps them from using somebody like you? Is it they don't they don't know about you guys or what? I mean, what is it? Yeah, I'd say some of it is that. I'd say some of it is uh, just apathy, right? Mm-hmm. Like you said, how many people wake up in the morning and go, you know what I want to do today? I want to call a new insurance agent. That yeah. sounds amazing. That's really what I need to do. You you have to feel real pain. So what happens is um, incrementally, and again, this is particularly to small businesses, uh, incrementally. Uh, small businesses put themselves in very negative positions, both from a coverage and pricing perspective, because they do business with someone, person probably did their best work, right? I'm not saying a lot of, the vast majority of agents are wonderful people trying to do their best. But then over time, the lack of attention, the lack of understanding, of communication, of education, they just start to fall off. And then finally, they get to a point three, five years later, where they're like, Screw these guys. They're not taking care of me. And then they go to the next agent, but now they have this bitter taste in their mouth. They're like, ah, yeah. oh, insurance agents, or this is BS, or, you know, this happened. And look, guys, you know, here, here's a reality that that most agents won't tell you that is absolutely true. When you sign in and in, when you purchase insurance, you're not purchasing a T-shirt or a new freezer for your business. You are signing a contract. 
That contract clearly defines what is covered and what is. So when, unfortunately for small business owners, when something isn't covered, it's your fault. Yeah. Now, here's what I will tell you. And no one likes to hear that. Um, but here, here's, the, here's the honest piece. Uh, the broker should help guide you through that process. And when they call themselves a broker and agent, it doesn't really matter. Right. The, the, the process should, you should be handheld through that. But yeah. at the end of the day, that contract clearly states whether something is covered or not covered. So by, so there are some ways and we can get into this, that you can question your agent to find out, do they understand what you're mm-hmm. selling you? But it's why we lead with education first is because I'm literally going to try to tell you, here are the 10 exclusions on this policy. Here is what this covers and what it doesn't. And we have a process internally that we do that I think differentiates us, which we call our one call close process. Now, for those of you who are cynical, you're going, ah, geez, these guys only want to talk to us one time. No. The reason I only want to talk to you one time isn't because I don't want to waste time on you or anything like that. It's because one, I want to respect your time. You're a business owner like I am, and you shouldn't have to have multiple conversations with me in order to, for me to do business. What I should do is ask you a series of open-ended, honest questions in which I get an understanding as to what your pain is. Mm -hmm. So we have a process that all of our salespeople get trained on that we walk through, not as a way to sell you, but a way to solve your problem, right? You have a problem, hired a new employee, you're, you're, uh, you get a hundred percent renewal increase year over year. You've had three claims and no one will cover you. Um, you're not getting clear answers out of your agent. You can't get a certificate of insurance. Um, there's a product they don't sell. Uh, you just simply don't have a clue what's going on and feel like you don't know who to trust, right? There are all these different reasons why we just had a guy call us because he was being charged a $10,000 broker fee for the last three years. And, and, and the agent had kind of hit it on the policy was according to the agent. He was upfront about the fact that this was happening, but, but the, but the insured didn't know pissed him off. He called us. Right. So like there are all these different scenarios and, and I'm not even saying that that was the wrong thing for that agent to do to charge right. that. Policy. Yeah. I'm not, right. I'm not, that's not a judgmental thing. What I'm saying is there are a million reasons why people call, but what most agents do is they just go, what do you need? And here's the best price. Right. And it's like, yeah. Okay. Sure, that's maybe one element of it. But what I can say from 17 years of selling insurance uh, is that it is practically never that price is the number one and there's a number one concern. Because yeah. frankly, at a certain level, insurance is a commodity. There are certain products, there are certain industries where it is not. But for the vast majority of business owners, the carrier is fairly meaningless. Doesn't mean it's absolutely meaningless, but it is just one of several things. And so, so the price being a hundred dollars here or there is less important than are if you're, if you're a contractor and you need a COI to get on a job site and you call your agent, are they going to pick up the phone and get you the COI so you can go to your work or, right. you know what I mean? Like, are you going to have to deal with automatic renewals every year? Or do you know your agent is at least looking at your coverage and pricing and making sure that you're at least in the range, right? So like for us, we're in a hard market right now, so so this is a little difficult, but uh, we have a 10% price increase trigger. So frankly, if your price fluctuates, your price is going to fluctuate naturally over time in a, in a 10% less and a 10% more range. So like if you're paying 1000 there could be one year you're paying 1100 There could be another year you're down at 925 It's yeah. just going to kind of fluctuate up and down most years. Now, if we see more than a 10% price increase, we have an automatic trigger to just scan the market. And what we may find is, look, you're still in pretty much the best thing. It's not right. worth switching, right? One of the big issues, and again, this goes to education, switching your insurance constantly is bad for you. Yeah. Very, very bad. So what we want to do is figure out what the problems are, solve the problems, do it in a cost-effective and efficient manner so that the so that the business owner isn't wasting their time and they're getting the things that actually matter to them, whether that's convenience, speed, availability, uh, access to products, et cetera, that, that those things are addressed. And that process has taken me a long time to put together. And I think, and hopefully from all the blabbering and words that I've made come out of my face hole in the last few minutes, you understand that we've put a lot of thought and testing into it to make sure that our uh, business owners are taken care of. Yeah, no, that's good. And I, w- I want to now circle back to what you talked about a little bit because it kind of ties into 
um, pricing a bit is the sustainability versus protection yeah. when, when business owners look at that, because I'm just looking at protection. I'm really looking at dollars, man. I just need the, I just, just, this is all I want, right? Unpack that, the, what yeah. you, what you meant by that. So there's, there's a couple layers to it. Layer number one is to me, protection, safety, security are the common words that are used associated with insurance. Yet mm -hmm. none of your insurance agents are standing out in front of your building, making sure that the floodwaters don't hit right. it. And none of them are bringing buckets of water and tossing it on your business when it's on fire, right? Yeah. They're not protecting, they're not providing safety, they're not providing security. What they are providing is, and I know this term is terrible, but it's peace of mind that you have a sustainable business, that when the worst thing happens to you, your business starts on fire, a flood hits, someone slips and falls and sues you for a million bucks, right? A hacker comes in and shuts down all your systems and says, if you don't pay me $100,000, I'm not unlocking them. When those things happen, your business gets to keep going. Yeah. That's what insurance is for, is so that when the worst day happens to mm. you, and if any of you have experienced the universe in any capacity for any period of time, you know that inevitably at some point, a really bad day is going to happen. Yeah. Do you want your business to continue or not? That's the question. That is the question about insurance. It's do you want your business to continue or not? You, you are, are again, go back to a contractor. You put up a wall in a building and you miss a board. You weren't paying attention. You're thinking about the fact that your kids got a baseball game and your, your wife's on business trip. And you got to also pick up your younger kid from school and you have 10 bazillion things and you forget to put a board in and that wall fails and something happens. And now your business is toast. They want to come after your house. They want to come after your car. They want to come after all these things, right? Do you want your business to keep going or not? Insurance makes sure that it does. That's it. That's what it's for. It's for it's for that worst day. Do you want to keep it? If you're like, screw it, don't care. I'm going to file bankruptcy and go work for somebody else. Hey, maybe you don't need insurance. I mean, frankly, yeah. I mean, they can still come after you. And LLC protections, depending on what state you are, are very loose, guys. So I I, I hear a lot of like uh, armchair uh, lawyers who are also small business owners who want to tell you, well, I have an LLC, so they can't come after me. And I'm like, man, nah, you may want to do some case law study on that because that's not how it actually works. Like mm -hmm. if you aren't properly protecting your business and you haven't filled your business with the proper number of assets, they're going to plow right through that LLC and they're going to come after, come after your personal assets. And, um, so you just want to be very, very careful of that. And if you ever want to ever own a business again, they'll just put a lien on you and wait for you to try to do something again. And the minute you try to do it, you're going to be screwed. So like, yeah. let's not play that game, right? My, my thought is let's not play that game. If you want your business to sustain, let's just make sure we set up the program properly. That doesn't mean it has to be the most expensive. It mm -hmm. just means let's think through what your needs really are and understand that everything you do, you're either insuring it or you're self-insuring it. That's it. If you choose not to have cyber insurance, the cyber risk doesn't go away. Right. You're just self-insuring it. If yep. you choose not to have general liability insurance, the general liability risk doesn't go away. You've just chosen to self-insure it. All that means is when the person slips and falls in your business and sues you, you have to come out of pocket for that. That's yep. that's what it means. So, yep. you know, that's why I, I like to think like, okay, you're don't think protection. It's not going to stop the thing from happening, but mm. what it will do is make sure you have this business that is so vitally important to you, to your family. It's part of your persona. It's, 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 you had a dream when you started it. Let's make sure that thing continues. And that's what insurance does. I love that. That That's yeah. You're either buying insurance or you're self-insuring. That is a great way to put it, Ryan, because that's so true. And business owners don't think that way. I mean, people mm -hmm. don't think that way because the risk does not go away. So talk just briefly about, um, your company about rogue risk and you've done you, you're it's an online yeah. insurance company but with humans i mean yeah yeah so so we're uh in, in in many regards we operate just like all the small agencies that you drive through you know you're yeah. driving through middle america and you see all these agencies we we operate similarly we're, we're just a digitized version of those i have 25 individuals spread throughout the country today we write in all 50 states um we use technology to help us so, so I have this term when when I when I got fired from the from the uh, uh, gym uh, business and went back to insurance and was starting Rogue. The first term, you know, I started brainstorming and what do I want my business to be or whatever. And the first term that I wrote down was this term, human optimized. So, just to explain to you what that means is, assume there's a 20 minute block of time that one of my people gets to spend with a customer. Say you, Michael. Okay, 
in a standard agency because of a lack of maybe like self-service tools, automation, the use of maybe virtual assistants or, or uh, uh, RPAs, bots, things, things that can do the transactions. What will happen is I'll spend five minutes of that 20 with you plowing through the information. Michael, give me, the, what, what do I need? I need this. I need a VIN. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Here's what it is. Okay. I got to get off the phone. Bye. And then I do that because I know I have to spend the next 15 minutes doing all these hyper-technical, awful, laborious transactions and all these different databases and systems. So instead of spending the good time with you, figuring out what's going on, making you feel comfortable, making you feel heard, right? Building trust. Maybe I'm maybe I'm saying, ask, asking, hey, Michael, there's, you have a cyber risk here that we don't have on the books. Can we talk about that? Like, try, right? Instead of spending that good time together, I'm spending all my time transacting. So what I wanted to do was flip that on its head. I wanted to say, let's build, let's use self-service automations, uh, bots where necessary. And the bots are really just like moving data between systems in an easy way so the humans don't have to do it. And virtual assistants, which are doing um, more data mining and uh, helping us like find different information that we need that so then we don't have to ask all this stuff from people, right? right? We can then spend 15 minutes really building a relationship mm -hmm. and then just five minutes doing transactions. So that's kind of a human optimized model. And what it's allowed us to do is scale our business throughout the entire country. Um, we compete against some of the largest brokers in the country. Uh, we're growing like crazy. Uh, people seem to like the process. You, you, everything happens digitally, right? But we, you zoom if you want it. But our biggest kind of tool is is just the way that we talk to people, and yeah. I think the way that we use the phones to to help people to help understand what their problems are, solve them, and then we use video proposals as a as a way to connect, to show our face to let them know that there are real humans behind it, to give people a, a thing that they can look at, right? Like our whole thing is, is, is transparency and authenticity. So we literally attach the carrier proposals to our, our video proposal, which, which most agents don't do. Like they repackage it and they'll put their yeah. logo on it and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 because you can change numbers. You can make things seem better than they are. I want our customers, our prospects until they become customers to see exactly the same information that we have. So we have a very clear and specific process. And, um, you know, what we find is, is people really enjoy it because we yeah. use video proposals and we're not trying to pressure them to get back on the phone at 2 PM to, you know, to wedge some time in their day. It's like, look, you can, you can review this seven times. You can review it at 7 PM. You can send it to your spouse or your partner or, or your, uh, a, a business mentor, have them all look at it come back with questions or just tell us that you want it. And, and we try to do that not as a way to like not have to interact with people. We tr we've set this process up to be respectful of the types of individuals that we work with, which are business owners who are busy and stressed and anxious. I mean, I know that as well yeah. as anybody and, um, and uh, seemingly it works. I love it. I love it. We, I, I got, I got a whole list of questions, but we're not going to have time for them today because okay. this is fascinating because most business owners, you're right. I mean, you've obviously done this a long time to understand the the mindset of a business owner. You go, yeah, I gotta I gotta research new insurance, or I get to go and talk with some prospects. Yep, I'm going to right, and and they're leaving their business at risk yep. for lots of reasons. You've created this online way to to educate, to get information, to actually have interactions with a human with with really, and dare I say this, no sales pressure. Right. I mean, it's, it's yeah. it, it reminded me, dude, as we just booked an Airbnb for a, for a trip. We got, I'm like, you're, you're providing insurance and helping people buy insurance. Kind of like Airbnb lets me book a house. Yep. They're not calling me. They're, they're saying, here's everything you want to know. Look, Michael, if I have to pressure you into buying a product for me next year, you're going to go, ah, I got to yeah. find somebody else. Yeah. What, the killer in our industry. So very selfishly, I want to do as best job as I can for you and make you. So the, the the way the economics work in the in the insurance industry is that I, no matter what your business is, I will lose money on you the first year. There is, I will lose money doing business with you. Like, let's say I wrote, let's say just for this podcast, I wrote you a, a simple GL policy in case you do anything in person, an E&O policy and a media liability policy in case you say something crazy, right? So let's say I wrote those three policies. I lose money writing that for you because- my time, my onboarding people's time, the time that it takes my accountant people, 
the 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 uh, cost of the software that we have to have, I lose money no matter what. I need to do a good job for you because I don't start making money sometime until the second half of the second year that you are my client. Wow. So, so very selfishly so that you guys who are listening to this know, and this is the economics across the board. This is why you guys get treated so poorly, small business owners, because your business, your insurance, your does not make us money until the second half of the second year. Imagine if whatever you're selling, you're a baker and you're selling muffins and someone comes in and buys a muffin and a coffee and you don't actually make money on that muffin or coffee for, for 24 months. Yeah. Imagine if that were the case. So like, that's our business model. So I'm, I have to do a good job for you. I have to make you feel respected, uh, uh, understood. I have to be transparent and I have to be consistent because I need you to renew your insurance with us at least one time, or I have lost money by doing business with you. So, so just so, you know, I'll be clear on how the economics work. So cool. all that being said, you know, this process is meant to get people to feel like they can connect with us when they need to, that they have a trusted partner, that though we may never physically meet, that we're here for you, that we're providing a great service, that you can reach out to us whenever you want, and that you can be comfortable in your decision doing business with us. So, um, you know, we've had to tailor it because it's digital and also bo being born out of COVID, you know, kind of yeah. a lot of this yeah. being born during COVID. Um, this was just the native way to do business. I wasn't couldn't walk the streets, you That's know, right. March of 2020. That's right. Exactly. So, um, so, you know, this is just, just kind of born out That's of cool. all that. And, uh, it's a, not everyone loves it. Some people want to know they can drive down the street and their insurance yeah, agents. Right okay. there. That's great. That's for them. Okay. Wonderful. Wish them the best, but for the people that are looking for a relationship, like we described, I think we do a very good job. That's awesome. Tell them where to, the, where do they take that next step? Where do they find out more information about you and rogue risk? Yeah. So if you like, uh, you know, this from an insurance perspective, uh, you can just go to rogue, R O G U E R I S K.com. You'll find all our videos. You can look us up on YouTube. We have tons of videos there, tons of content. Um, you can get a quote from any of those places. If you want to reach out to us, that's great. Right. And, uh, by get a quote, I mean, you're going to be connected to one of our advisors. Yeah. Um, it's not like, uh, you punch in your information, you get a number back. You're going to, um, you know, one of our advisors will talk to you and walk you through the process. And that's great. If you're interested in like, these philosophies. Uh, I do have my own podcast, my own website. You can find me at Ryan Hanley, R Y A N H A N L E Y dot com. And uh, that's a great place to start. Instagram, LinkedIn, you know, all the places. Awesome. That is great. Ryan, thank you for, thanks for doing what you're doing, for being creative enough to realize you're unemployable and to, yeah. and to start a company that actually is going to serve thousands and thousands of business owners who are struggling with how to how to buy insurance how to protect their their business so it is there sustainably for themselves their family their customers long term and doing it in a really fun different way than than traditional insurance was done so i, wow. I appreciate applaud you for doing that man thanks for thank you for the time for, uh, i appreciate it well you're welcome thanks for being my guest on uh, expert speak today man